Sunday and welcome to our show. We have a lovely show lined up for you tonight. On my sofa tonight, I'm joined by creator of Canal Street Online, Ian Scott, and author Stuart Linden. Collectively, they are responsible for the distribution of many stories and images of the LGBT plus world. Also tonight, Haley gets very excited about the hottest film releases of 2023, and he's back wandering the wonderful, beautiful places in our region where you go for a little walk. That's Paul Rudd. It's shaping up to be one amazing show. But first to start the show off, our Hayley is looking at the best films that are not yet released. It's your film. Hi, I'm Hayley and welcome to Your Film and a very happy new year to you. Let's kick it off by talking about which films are going to hit our cinemas this year. Now, soon, very soon, on the 27th of January, we have The Fablemans. That hits the cinemas and it's directed by Steven Spielberg. It is a coming-of-age drama about Sammy, an adolescent who's an aspiring filmmaker. He then discovers a really devastating secret, a family secret, and then he uses the power of films to help him discover the truth. And like I said, that hits our screens from the 27th of January. Also in February, we have Puss in Boots. That stars Antonio Banderas. We have Irish film The Quiet Girl. This is about a nine-year-old girl who is sent away from her dysfunctional family. That is being released in February. The fantastic Claire Foy. She stars in Women Talking. That is based on a true story about a religious community. And this also hits our screens in February. Now, I'm really excited to tell you this, that currently the sequel to The Exorcist is filming. And it will hit our screens later this year. That's it from me. I shall catch you next time. And remember, stronger together. Bye. Thank you, Haley. Now, having worked on many publications in his vast career, there is one man responsible for capturing so many of the best photos of the LGBT world in the past 30 odd years plus. Yes, Stuart Linder has released books and uh, some of the best photographs and he joins us now. Welcome, Stuart. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you very much. These photographs are something else and they capture a particular time and era. Why did you focus so much on that particular time and era? I was young and foolish. Really? Yeah. Simple as that. Simple as that. <clears throat> it was my time. You know, it's, uh, I was in my early thirties and, um, I was going out and about anyway and taking photos. Uh, and suddenly I started to get paid to take photos. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, it was, it was great. It was just, it was just a great time. So do you have a particular style that you go for when you were trying to capture these photos then? Well, yeah, this, this, to me, there are two types of photographs. If I was going out on a wet and windy winter's night in Bolton, for example, you know, and there was just one pub um, and there'd be a handful of people and then you, you, were getting, um, you were getting posed photos. You're pulling everybody that was breathing in the pub together and trying to make a decent photo. But my absolute favourite are, are what I call reportage or capture the moment photographs. So lurking in the bars and the clubs um, in sort of a doorway where it was well lit and, and waiting for the right people to come through the light. And then I'd just pounce out with the camera and take their picture and then say, just take the picture for Gay Times or, or Points North. Is that all right? And they go, oh, yeah, thanks. Because we should say you did work for the Gay Times. I mean, what era was it when you were working for them? What sort of decade was it? Uh, well, Mid-90s. Mid -90s. Mid -90s. So what happened was I... Um, I, I I used to be out and about taking pictures in the bars anyway. And then um, Terry George, who's mm -hmm. Mr. Gay Leeds, basically, yeah, yeah. Uh, he decided he was going to start his own magazine at All Points North. 
Um, and he sort of said to me, do you want to be our scene reviewer? And uh, so I said, yes. So um, I was going out and about all over the north of England, Birmingham to Newcastle, Manchester, you name it, um, doing photographs and writing the words as well. So I wrote the reviews and took the pictures. And I kept bumping into the same guy, a fantastic guy called Bill Shaw from Gay Times. But he lived in Brighton. And he would come up to Birmingham, we would come up to Manchester and maybe do one photograph for Man in Manchester, for example. And we kept meeting each other and he would say, it's daft me coming up. Why don't you be our northern scene reviewer? And so I became the northern scene reviewer for Gay Times. And why photography? As you know, you mentioned that you wrote, wrote things as well. Why photography? Why was that a passion? I just like <clears throat> capturing that, um, that, <clears throat> that history, that moment. I just sort of some people have asked me about why there's you know why my pictures are so they're just about people in bars and clubs and because my remit was about taking pictures of people mm. having a good time right i wasn't a political photographer what would you want people to look at how would you like them to look at your re-release of your book now that this is all happening how would the young people how should they look at this book? it's quite interesting because i've had a lot of young people uh, who, who you know and when i say young people i mean people who weren't alive mm. <laughs> at the time because it's what 30 <laughs> That's touching 30 years. Yeah. And since the very first pictures were taken. Um, and they're quite jealous that they weren't there. Mm -hmm. um, they look at this picture and they go, oh, we, we wish the gay scene was like that now. So you must have took thousands of pictures then. And looking back at it, is there a particular picture that kind of haunts you, that, you know, makes you feel unsettled with yourself as you remember perhaps somebody that's in that photo? Um, I think the, the, the picture that... I alluded to that, that, that there's one only really one political picture I ever took and it was it was it was just being at the right time at the right you know the right place at the right time and it was um it was the um party in the park it was the it's Sackville Park and Paul O'Grady Lily Savage was on stage and it was 93 ish 94 and clause 28 was still in force Thank you very much, Mr. Anderton, amongst others. Um, and Paul O'Grady pointed out that there were plainclothes police at the back of the park, stood on the wall, watching and um, making notes. Um, and I was right at the very front of the stage, taking uh, taking photographs of Paul O'Grady on stage. Uh, and as one, the crowd turned and decided they were going to have these police. Mm -hmm. But... Not in a nasty way. They weren't going to harm them, but they were going to see them off. Mm. Uh, well, I, I mean, I was I was very overweight at the time. <laughs> I was a bit of a porker. And somehow I managed to run mm. from the front of the stage right round the edge of the crowd onto the street, onto the other side of the road. And there's a photograph in the book of um, these policemen, in a plainclothes police in a car. And there's two fabulous lesbians who've thrown themselves... <laughs> on the bonnet of the car and are passionately kissing and the crowd is behind them cheering and these police are sat in the car they do not know where to look it sounds amazing now one gentleman that of course uh, is a very familiar face here on your manchester bringing us the most information about our very famous street canal street joins us now there's a plethora of events going on welcome to our sofa again mr hello, ian hello. scott happy how new are year, you by the way happy new year there must be so many stories that you're hearing from stuart mm -hmm. Yeah, you, well, I was there. Yeah, well, exactly. I, was there. I didn't want to say that. In the late you know? 80s, I watched yeah. us all get... We opened uh, Mets in 1994. Nice bar. The Mets. Went there yeah. many times. Yeah, absolutely. And that had just followed Manto, yeah. which opened about 18 months before. Yeah. And you were talking about the amount of venues that were available. And it was basically four or five. You yeah. know, the Thompsons was there. New York was there. The Union, not the new Union, mm. but the new Union. And very little else. There was no Via. There was no Velvet. There was nothing further up the street. It was all, you know, that that time. So um, we're reprinting it. It's going to be available in shops and online from from PriorPress.com. But it's going to be in Village Books and places like yeah. that in Manchester. And we'll be working with you. We'll yes, it. yes, fantastic. And um, uh, and there's prints that people can buy as well. We had a couple of requests for for for. So we're doing some high-quality prints that people can buy, and all that's on priorpress.com. 
um and there's going to be some new the cover's different it's going to be i think it's going to be pink the cover you know just because why not and um it's going to be paperback rather than hardback yeah and it's going to be a bit cheaper and of course ian you do loads of collaborations with people like stuart mm -hmm. i mean you started up canal street online why did you start canal street online what was the, well, the news it, it was there to start mm. nobody else was doing anything mm. interestingly this month is 15 years since we wow. started it. Great. So we were operating at that time, Taurus Bar at the top end of Canal Street. And I suddenly realized that nobody was providing kind of an umbrella yeah. for what was going on, not just in the village, but in the wider LGBT, well, it wasn't LGBTQ then, mm -hmm. it was just the gay community. Yeah. And so, you know, it was there to be done, started it, um, picked up, you know, bits and pieces of information. It just grew and grew and grew. Uh, interestingly, the card, which is just one part of it, has just celebrated 10 years uh, in existence. I mean, you and, mentioned the card, though. Got... We will have to explain what there is. This well, Canal, Street on, uh, the Canal Street card. Yes. What is it and what, what does it deliver to people? Well, the card, uh, as I say, has been around for 10 years. Um, it's a benefit card, basically. And uh, there's about 150 different benefits by uh, for cardholders. About 15 of them are in the village, so the vast majority are with what we might call ally um, businesses uh, in Greater Manchester and beyond. And um, yes, yeah, it's, it's it's the but simplest they're growing, of isn't it? It's, it's, it seems ridiculously busy, not just from yeah, users, but people yeah. that want to be um, yeah. part or supporters of the car. Absolutely right. And in fact, the, the truth of the matter is that the gay village has expanded and it's now called Manchester. Mm. You know, you can pretty much go anywhere yeah. with a partner or a loved, a loved one, friend, family, whatever, and socialise wherever you like. Um, and what I try to do is just cherry pick some nice quality businesses where uh, our community are not, not just made to feel welcome, but actively encouraged and given a reward by, yeah. by going there. Um, so yeah, and it's building, we're just under 1100 card holders now. It's never been bigger than that. And uh, increasingly, people are saving hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds a year, depending on where they go, the frequency, the number of people that they're with. Um, most of our uh, offers are available all the year round. So, of course, we're sitting in January where everybody is offering 50% off here, yeah. there and whatever. Mm -hmm. But ours are available very often on Saturday nights as well. So, you know, the card has been one of our great successes. And we also work with the George Hatch Trust. Mm -hmm. um, so out of card revenue, if you like, we make some um, contributions to a, a very important cause as well. Now, 15 years you've been doing Canal Street yeah, yeah. online. I mean, you must have also, like Stuart, seen a massive change yeah. within the village and indeed the LGBT plus community. Yeah, very much so. And, but bizarrely, in, in some basic terms, it hasn't changed at all. So, you know, if you look at the venues that are around today, the vast majority of them have been around a long time. Yeah. And, you know, we talked earlier about the, those early 90s and the arrival of Manto and then uh, Mets. Uh, but then the Vias, the Velvets came along and other businesses. Mm. One or two came and went, but actually a lot of them are still in existence. Mm. What do you expect what? people that are new to Canal Street to take away from Canal Street? What do you hope that they would embrace when they come to Canal Street? Um, well, obviously, a, a sense of fun, camaraderie, safety, confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the, the, the things I feel very strongly about is that, although it's not a perfect um, environment, the gay village is by and large a very safe haven for a lot of the youth. So people of my generation pretty much don't need the village in the way that they did. Mm -hmm. But actually, the, the youth coming in from... Uh, not just uh, the you know, greater Manchester boroughs, but actually coming in from Leeds, from Glasgow, from Liverpool mm. even, where they've only got a small handful of um, yeah. businesses. I think that's... They're coming, they're yeah. coming here for the, the, the mass, if you like. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the beauty of the Gate Village and the reason why it's world famous is that, you know, of the 40 or so individual venues, um, you've got such variety in there. So... It, you know, it doesn't matter what your taste is. Um, and, and increasingly, you know, with issues of trans and non-binary, you know, the, there are greater requirements coming along. And, and uh, as I say, not perfect, but I believe that the gay village in Manchester provides more um, for the entire community 
than it ever has yeah. and better than anywhere in this country. It's a perfect place to leave that there. That's fantastic. I love it all. History is what keeps us going. And uh, thank you very much, Ian. And of course, you, Stuart, as well. Now he's back after a short hiatus. He is wondering the best places to take time out from the region's biggest cities. Yes, that's right. Paul Rudd is back. What a ruddy life. Happy New Year, everyone. This is my brand new segment. I want everybody to get up Get exploring. So please welcome Rudd Rambles. Better than all that plumbing rain we've been having at it over Christmas. It's just so nice through here and look at the beautiful sun. Just look at it. Absolutely lovely. When you go through here you mainly get like dog walkers and they're death friendly. Like I said we'll be at my destination in just a moment. It's so beautiful. This is my happy place, actually. During COVID, I gave up giving the gym and I came up walking through here. And it's just good for the mindset. It's good to get out, get walking. Just getting out into the fresh air is just brilliant. Stonewood Park is so lovely. It's just one, there's loads of different routes. There's one way you can go really high up. I'll have to take you on that another day. But this is just a general route through. On a lovely day like today, the first thing is that is all you need to go on a good old walk, a good old ramble with some water coming up. And this bit is what I like about the wood park. So you're in the woods all this way through, and then it kind of opens up. There's a r river down there too. There's a lovely river. There's like two paths. Which one to go on? I usually go up here. And like I said, there's loads of different routes. You can go right to the top. You see right to the top of the wood park there. I've only been up there once, so in just a moment you'll see a fantastic thing here in Dunwood Park. I've always wanted to go on it, but I've never been on it. It's a climbing rock. I think lots of kids have been on that. It's absolutely amazing, absolutely fun. This park is family friendly. It's got a playground area. It has a bowling green. It also has a cafe with fantastic food because I went in the other week and had some and it was lovely. Absolutely recommend it. Well, I'm coming to the end of my trail. I really hope you've enjoyed my first walk. Rambling with Rod. That's me, Paul Rod, here in the beautiful Dunwood Park. Oh, how amazing to have him back. Now, listen, many of you at this time of year get proper glued to the telly, mainly because this is the time of the year where all them shows get you hooked on endless cliffhangers. But what are the best TV shows to watch? Well, joining us now from the North East is Mr. Michael Adams. How are you, Michael? Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Uh, i tell you what, we don't need to do any talking about telly. Rudd's Rambles, get on that all day long. Quite amazing, wasn't it? Quite amazing. It was. Getting out and about with Paul Rudd, love it. Love it. Now listen, you're in the North East. You've been watching quite a lot of television. What are the ones to watch? Yeah, I'm coming from our, our northeast newsroom, should we call it. Um, so the one thing that dropped on BBC iPlayer yesterday that I used to love back in the day. In fact, look at this. I've got a prop as well. Look at this. A bit of Waterloo oh, Road. Look at that. Oh, there we go. Can't got my go. uniform on. I know. Was you in it? And it's back. I wasn't in it, no. 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 I mean, you know what? I'm, I'm probably too old to be in it now. I'd have to be a teacher, wouldn't I? Um, so <laughs> it's back. Seven episodes on BBC iPlayer. Loads of old favourites back as well. Um, we've got Angela Griffin's back in it. Um, Adam Thomas is back in it. Um, if you really you just get straight on that, go and watch it. But as well, have you seen The Traitors? Have I seen The Traitors? I spent all day watching it in one go. It was quite the sensation, wasn't it? That's exactly what we've done as well. So it's a bit like, for anybody who hasn't seen it, to give you a little bit of an example, it's a bit like Big Brother mixed with I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, mixed with The Circle and um, Fort Boyard as well. We'll throw that in there because that was set in the castle, wasn't it? So that's one to watch then. I think they're going to be making a second series of that very, very soon. But something I'm keen to talk about is Happy Valley. Everybody hooked again Ooh, on this programme. Yeah. Love a bit of Sarah Lancashire, don't we? Because she, she was brilliant in Corrie back in the day. And they always seem to do really well, those Corrie actresses, don't they? Once they've, they've left the programme... And then they go on to do brilliant things. But yeah, back to the third and final series. And as ever, I'm sure there's going to be some drama for us, isn't, isn't there? Have you got any um, juicy gossip that you can give us from the story that we can be expecting from Happy Valley? 
some juicy gossip. Oh, I wouldn't want to give too much away. I wouldn't. She, she's <laughs> about to leave. There's there's seven months left on her uh, before she can retire. So it's going to be an eventful seven months, isn't it? It's going to be a very uh, an eventful for one particular writer, producer, and creator, Mr. Russell T. Davis. He sort of disappeared for a little while with Doctor Who when Doctor Who kind of went like that. Now he's back. We are excited. What can you tell us about Doctor Who? So, Russell T. Davis has got so much going on at the moment. So obviously, like you say, he sort of disappeared for a little while. Um, and then, of course, not last year, the year before now, he did It's a Sin, which is absolutely wonderful. Uh, but he has now actually returned to Doctor Who. And uh, with that, he's brought David Tennant and Catherine Tate back. Um, so they will be starring in three episodes for the show's 60th anniversary across the next year. Um, but not only that, he's also been filming a new drama over at Granada Studios um, surrounding a soap legend. Remember Noel Gordon, who played Meg in Crossroads? Crossroads, yes, I do. She was a legend, weren't she? She was. I mean, you talk about legends with red hair. You've got Pat Phoenix, Meg Mortimer, Belinda Scandal, haven't you? <laughs> all redheads, all redheads. It's the future. So uh, that's dropping on ITVX in the next couple of weeks. So that's really exciting as well. I'm looking forward to seeing that. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing that. Um, also, I suppose we should touch on um, the Mask Singer, which returned oh, to us recently. Yeah. Who's that behind the mask? Is it Belinda Scandal? We'll have to wait and see. There is, I'd, actually. Um, go on. I was going to say I'd be knitting if it was me. Well, I was just about to talk about knitting. There's a lot of rumours that it might be Stacey Solomon. Because yes. she likes a good craft, doesn't she? Oh, yes. So is there anything mm. this week other than your Manchester that people should be definitely, definitely tuning into? So 100% BBC iPlayer at Waterloo Road. Um, Happy Valley continues this week. Um, Corey is all over the place this week. It was on uh, Monday, Tuesday. It's on again um, tonight, in fact. Um, at, oh, about now, actually, because <laughs> it's, it's for some reason it's on on a Sunday at 8pm. Um, so after your Manchester's finished, get Corey on there. Uh, lots of drama um, for Jacob and some are upcoming over the next few weeks. Um, I can't give too much away about Corey, which is really, oh, you know, I would love to, but I can't. Um, <laughs> but, but honestly, my top pick of, well, it was 2022, but get on it in 2023 as well. The Traitors, that had me and my mum transfixed on the television um, for the last, for like, literally like two days straight we were watching it. It was brilliant. Right, well, we'll see you back in the studio on the 18th. Till then, though, thank you very much, Michael Adams. What have you two been watching? Have you been watching anything in particular? Um, Do you watch the television? A lot of people don't watch television these days. No, I tend to. I tend to watch sort of. Um, I tend to binge watch straight to box sets. Yes. Things these days. Although I did go to the movies this week. Oh, did you I see? To see Whitney. Oh, it's good. I went oh, watching it as well. It's a bit good that I want to dance with somebody. Big hankies. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, it's very very clever. Made by the producers that made um, Bohemian Rhapsody as well. Yes, what are you watching, Ian? Call the midwife. Call the midwife. I'm a huge fan. I it's love it. One of the finest bits of television ever. Consistently good for like yeah. ten series or whatever. I wish they'd bring back a pull series of Downton. I really do, but that's not going to happen. Is it, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. listen, we've run out of time, everybody. Thank you so much, Jim. Pleasure. Thank you so much, Pleasure. Ian Scott. Absolutely fantastic. Well, make sure you check us out again on Wednesday show. We've got loads coming up for you. In the meantime, thanks to each and every one of you for watching this week's episode of. Your Manchester! Oh.